Sometimes being a professed Christian is kind of hard, you know, because everyone likes to come right up to your face and tell you exactly why you're wrong. But also, it's hard in these times to know exactly what the Bible says about certain social issues. Well, you no longer need to wonder. So what does the Bible say about why God takes loved ones away from us? This video's format is different from the past and future weeks, and while this may end up being slightly shorter than the rest of the videos I've put out and will put out, I find that this one happens to be of the utmost importance. I know that I've covered a similar topic with the whole why is evil allowed type uh, video, uh, and if you haven't seen that one, I'll be using, you know, a bit of information from that one, so I suggest you go check it out before we, uh, get the ball rolling. But something recently happened that made me think about doing another more specific video on this topic. My old pastor, uh, the first pastor that I can really remember, uh, passed away recently. And this video is a tribute to him just as much as it's a way for me to really console myself. To start this off, I'll say two things that are super cliche and I really don't like hearing, especially when I'm grieving. God has a plan and his ways are higher than ours. And yes, as much as that may be annoying to hear right now, it's not a lie. He knows exactly what is going on and he is working in ways that I can't even begin to theorize about. Luke 9, 23 through 26 says, then Jesus said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you or yourself are lost and destroyed? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Now that's a lot to break in, so let's divide it into two parts. Part 1. If you want to follow Christ, you have to literally do that. Now back in the time when Christ was walking around, he asked of his disciples literally to follow him. This is exemplified in Luke 18.22 when Jesus is talking to that rich man who, who's... well... I mean, it's in Luke 18:22. so... This man explains that he's followed all the commandments and wants to follow Jesus. So Jesus replies, There is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then you can come and follow me. So yeah, the man didn't do it because he was rich, even though Jesus tells him right after that that these possessions don't really mean anything on earth, obviously. But what you need to get from this part is that you need to follow Christ no matter where he tells you to go. Whether it's a physical place or just doing something you don't want to do. You've got to do it because he told you to do it. When the boss man says that you have to go train a new guy, you've got to go train the new guy. Even if the guy's a pain in the butt and doesn't know what's going on. That was actually a really good metaphor right there. That I, I didn't even realize it when I wrote it. But wow, I am... I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably the smartest man alive. Part 2. If you don't follow Christ, well, bad things will happen. Now, as I've stated in that Why is Evil Allowed video, uh, good and bad things happen to Christians and non-Christians all the time. It's just what happens in this, well, fallen world. However, when you die, one of two things happen. You go to heaven or you go to hell. However, I do not believe that purgatory happens because I have yet to find real scripture that tells about purgatory. And I'm glad too, because sometimes this earth kind of feels a little like purgatory, so there's a theory right there. So when you die, the next thing you know, you're going to be judged by God. Now it's unknown if this happens immediately or if it happens thousands of years later, but honestly it really doesn't matter because you won't know anything's happening in that time. I don't know, maybe like you didn't prepay for any fast passes in the line so you gotta wait all the way at the back or wait until the very end of the day when like they give you all the free ones for the rides that you don't really want and then you're just like well now I don't really want them because everybody's already leaving the park anyways. Sorry I was ranting there a bit but regardless it says so in Revelations 20 11 through 15 and reading this is actually really impactful so I want you to check it out yourself because I think when you read it you're going to be like, wow, 
it's in my own voice and not this dork's voice. What I'm trying to get at, and one thing that I'm hoping that you're understanding from this, is that this life is merely a tiny little dot on the timeline that stretches into a infinity. Imagine like a ruler, right? You are not even a centimeter on that ruler. You are a millionth of a millimeter on that ruler. It's so so much so that in that ruler, you don't, you can't even see yourself on that speck. Time travel. This time on Earth is here solely for the purpose of getting as many people into heaven as possible. God put us here to have a relationship with us, and if we prove that we want that more than anything else, he'll bring us home. And of course, I'll talk about this in a later episode. And this is why we shouldn't be sad when fellow Christians pass away. Yes, of course, it's so terribly saddening and unexplainable by words, but if we know that they are saved through Christ, then we should be rejoicing for them. Because, in all honesty, they're in a better place than we are right now. They're about to be judged by God on how they lived their life for Him. And one day, when we make it there, we'll see Him right there. They'll be waving at us. We'll be standing in that line for 4,000 years, and they'll just be waving at us, going, Hey, good job, dude. I, I think you did all right. My pastor was a great man and a very avid follower of Christ. I remember asking him so many questions about the Bible and all these like little minute little details like why are dinosaurs not mentioned in the Bible and, and all these other things and, and I remember you know asking him stuff about that's not even in the Bible. I, I think I actually asked him once about like how hurricanes formed and well let's just say I was there for a couple hours listening to him. He impacted my life because he was one of the first real role models I had for the Christian life. And he will be missed by everyone forever. And if you've ever heard him preach, you will know how impactful he can be. And just remember that even in death, John 10.10 10 says, My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And although he is not talking about the richness associated with wealth, per se, he does mean a very, very satisfying life, and I know that my pastor had it. I will miss you, and I cannot wait to see you again.